Are first impressions right? Many pride themselves on their ability to make quick judgments about other people. Sometimes they're right, other times they're not. And as it's a human tendency to remember our successes more readily than our failures in life, we can grow complacent around this. We ordinarily meet more people in the course of one day than someone living in the Middle Ages might have encountered in a lifetime. So we form quick judgments of others because we have little time in which to make an assessment. Sometimes this is essential. The stranger who accosts us in the street must be sized up quickly. On other occasions, we make these calculations lazily based on people's looks, weight, clothes and how they speak. We deny that these and other factors influence us, but in reality they do. Human judgment is clouded. In Matthew chapter 16, Jesus asks his disciples who others think he really is. It's the critical turning point in his ministry. People have had time to watch Jesus closely, to observe his power and hear his wisdom. There was a buzz about him. Opinions were being formed and shaped. But the answer he receives is, some say you are John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. When we're stuck for a judgment, we usually try to make sense of what's in front of us by turning to the past. The people couldn't imagine that Jesus was unique. He's the new Elijah, isn't he? They were saying except he wasn't. No sooner had Peter correctly identified Jesus as Messiah among this parade of prophets than Jesus turned the table on his friend. In renaming Simon as Peter, he saw him as the rock on which the church would be built. This would have raised eyebrows at the time because Peter was notoriously impatient mercurial and rash, qualities that are almost the exact opposite of what we expect from leaders in the church now. But Jesus saw how Peter would grow into his role. And once Peter had identified Jesus for who he was, Jesus was able to mould Peter into whom he would become. We perhaps place less emphasis on character formation in discipleship than we ought to. This is partly because our surrounding culture is much more interested in personality than character, in being lively, outspoken and witty, rather than patient, gentle and faithful, for instance. But our goal is to be transformed into the likeness of Christ, which places a priority on character. The key to the transformation of Peter was the encouragement that Jesus offered him. He showed Peter what God saw in him and dared him to live up to it. We are woefully short on encouragement in life. Competition is valued over cooperation in so many spheres. People are reluctant to offer praise because it's too effusive. They're suspicious when they receive it too, assuming they are being flattered or flirted with. Our consumer instinct means we keep people on their toes. They're never quite sure if they're good enough. No wonder so many people feel insecure today. Despite the urge to judge others quickly and not subsequently change our view, Many of us have experienced epiphanies in life. The man you fall for after a long time. The woman you suddenly see as a friend. The child who gives a glimmer of what they will become. Today, we're preoccupied with the makeover, a superficial attempt to change the way that others view us. A deeper task is the naming of others in a way that releases them to be the person that God has called them to be. 
This is the creative task God is asking of all those who owe their faith to the rock on which the church was built. We can release and empower someone with just a word. So who will we set free this week?